So, quick rundown of the furnace as it stands at the moment. Um, I've done some mods recently on the burner. Uh, there are still some mods to do. Whether I ever get around to them or not, I don't know. But we'll see. Anyway, I'll give you a run round what's going on. So, furnace, obviously. Uh, I built this um, about four, maybe five years ago. I'd already been doing casting, but this is. I built this specifically for my home use, just in case I ever decided to go commercial myself. And to be fair, I don't think I'm ever going to do that now. Um, it was a high temperature refractory, can't remember the temperature now, but it's more than capable of handling cast iron temperatures. Um, it was a commercial grade uh, refractory and it's cast with stainless steel needles, all high bonded. And I'll open it up. Um, I've done a video on this before, so the furnace remains the same. Uh, the blower, you've seen me do the upgrade on it. Basically, it was a shortening of the nose. And what else did I do? Oh yeah, I put the um, the preheater on. Is it the preheater? No, I call that the preheater. Secondary heater. Uh, purely simply because the oil in here gets up to, uh, I can't remember what, got it 60 degrees or something now, I've got it set at. But when the furnace is cold, or when you first start to light it, Obviously that heat has got to sink down that pipe all the way in through the burner and of course I had the long nozzle on it. Um, oh, there's, there's the old nozzle. There's the old nozzle and you can see the length of it and of course there's a bit of copper pipe runs all the length of that up to the burner nozzle itself, the spray nozzle. So. By the time that oil had travelled all that distance, then into the back of the blower, up the tube, right up to the end of that, there's a quite a lot of oil in there that's got to go through the furnace before it starts to get warm. I mean that pipe's got to slowly warm up and it's not going to warm up that quickly. Added to that, of course you've got blown cold air running down that tube all the way down there. And of course it being a metal pipe, it just took ages to warm up, which was a pain in the butt. Lighting the furnace was never a problem, but just getting it controlled and dialed in was a nightmare. So you see me do the conversion on that. Uh, the next conversion that I will probably do at some point or other is actually create a larger aperture. Uh, this fan is more than capable, it's just a car blower fan. And you can imagine the amount of volume, you know, you sit in your car and you put your fan right up. The amount of air you get out of all the vents, it's more than capable of doing whatever I need it to do. But, because it goes through such a small aperture, it creates such a vortex inside that um, I need to slow the airflow down is in the volume I should say increase the volume but drop the speed so because it's going through quite a small aperture I want to slow it down a bit so a larger aperture same volume and it should slow it down inside um, not that it's a great problem for all the kind of stuff that I do but you know, I do want to do some cast iron and bits and pieces, but for that I'm definitely going to need to slow the um, the burn process down inside. So, oil tank. We'll upgrade this. This is version 2 or 3. Yeah, I think this is version 3. And I've had... A couple of issues with the other ones. This one works spotlessly. It's perfect. However, it's a bit small. Uh, that will do me a cast of about two litres of aluminium before I fill it up again. Which is no big deal, but you know, 
I'd, ra I'd rather have one which I can fill up and I know that I can do a couple of casts in a row. Uh, it's just an ammunition box. I use them because they're waterproof and relatively explosion proof. I've got a very fine gauze filter and inside the bottom there there's a thousand kilowatt heater and there's pipe going in which is basically just a temperature probe on the end of it. That monitors some temperature. Uh, I had made it so I could um, quick fill with some hydraulic couplings but I've never used them, never used them at all. Um, the oil that I use is, is from generator sets and it is relatively clean. The generators get serviced on uh, an hourly rotation so they do so many hours and the oil gets changed and then if it, it gets dirty and black but there's never any crap in it. It's always nice and clean and to be, run, to be fair I could probably do away with that filter altogether but for peace of mind, I still run it through the filter just in case there's anything. Uh, the nozzle is a DAFOS, I think. DAFOS? DANOF. Don't know, but it's it's pressure fed, so it's a um, with compressed air. There's the setup there for that. It could be converted quite easily to um, a just a pressure fed one with a pump pumping oil. Uh, I have got a set up for that if I want to. Um, it also had originally um, LPG connection as well, so I could actually light it on the LPG and then change it over. One thing I do need to do is make myself a control valve for more accurate fueling. Uh, at the moment I'm just using this to meter the fuel and that can be a little bit tweaky tweaky when it comes to it. Uh, control box, half of it's not used anymore. But basically uh, power switch and temperature switch. So I can turn the unit on. Um, temperature setting and it tells me when I'm heating oil and I did have a glow plug set up for something else, can't remember what. Um, I could have rigged this up for the heater down there, but I decided to go uh, with that little setup, and of course you've seen all of that now. So there we go, that's the business end. Uh, let me just turn that off for now. So I've got a main wall plug which feeds it all. Inside there I've got a 12 volt converter and I've got two pins on the top. One positive, one negative and they supply the burner with 12 volt because the burner is entirely 12 volt and therefore could run off a battery. Now that it's got the, um, the heater on it I could run the whole thing remotely off a car battery. Right, this is my um, first crucible holder and it was designed so if I was doing cast iron I could add an extension onto two people lift. It's for my smaller crucibles and works nice and well. It really is a good one actually. Um, the crucible for that is in the furnace at the moment because whenever I finish with a crucible I always put it in the furnace when I shut down and um, let it all cool down nice and slow. Keeps all the equipment nice and good. Um, tongs. Uh, my middle size crucibles and I've got a larger crucible which I think was a 25. Uh, very 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 rarely use that. Um, but uh, those ones, I've got the cradle for that there. And to be fair, it's a little bit of a pain in the arse. 
not a lover of using it. You could do a redesign, a bit like the last one. Um, my first, first ever Crucibles steel. And um, I can hear old foundryman saying, no, never ever use them. And he's right. I've given up using them a long time ago. Um, I have no need to use either of them every more, but I just use them for keeping tools and bits and pieces in, and they're very good for that. Uh, my little lead stock around the back, which isn't much. Uh, the inevitable uh, cake or cupcake tins for any excess that I have. Some weights for weighing down uh, one of my moulding flasks, so definitely needs weighing down every time. And I have got my temperature probe. Ventilation wise, um, I originally had a fan up there. I'll just pull the chimney out of the way and um, let you have a look up there again. The chimney just hangs on a hook at the top, up inside, and I've got another hook just here. I'll keep it out of the way when I'm, I want to get stuff in and out of the furnace. Other than that, the flue just goes back on, it just carries the excess heat out. So there's the hot air flue. Uh, I used to have a fan on there and it worked pretty well for a year and a half and then burnt out, unsurprisingly. Uh, I didn't think it was going to last that long to be fair and it was uh, run through with um, some pyro cable that ran straight into it but I've not bothered doing it again. Ventilation, I have a large fan there which is, what's that, 18 inches, 2 foot in diameter and that keeps the whole workshop ventilated. I use predominantly all bonded sand, which does mean it does smoke quite a bit in here. And I'll run it even when the furnace is running. Um, the flue is pretty good, but as a safety measure, I just keep a high volume airflow running through the workshop, which means it never gets warm in here. I um, mean, the carcass of the furnace doesn't get above about 40 degrees, I don't think. That's centigrade. It's pretty well insulated in there, so I mean the furnace on the out to touch doesn't really get that hot. The top does, <laughs> naturally, but the main body of the furnace doesn't get that hot. As a result, in the winter, it is bloody cold in here. Even if I've had the furnace running for a couple of hours in the winter, I'm lucky if the temperature in here goes up a couple of degrees. And it does get bloody cold out here. So, the fans has got a flap on it. I did have a speed controller on it, but it... So that's the noise you can normally hear in the background when I've got the furnace running. Uh, the furnace is noisy enough as it is, but with that running, it is bloody noisy in here. So I'm going to give it a quick light. I'm not going to run it for long because I haven't got a cast, so there's just no point. It'd be a waste of doing it. So it's just a very quick light up just to demonstrate how easy it is to start now. So, furnace itself, uh, I'm just trying to get some light in there, there's my crucible in there, I lift it open. When I built this I'd done several different designs of trying to lift the lead mechanism and um, you know like a foot pedal one and everything, I just didn't like any of them and in the end I just went with this simple idea, it's 
it's all cantilevered so the rods are loose braced up two metal straps on the roof and you can see it's just a, a barrel and I cut the smaller top onto it because I didn't want it full width and you don't need it on full width to be fair and you can still see the there's nothing in there um, I've never packed the lid with insulation never never felt the need to so and to open it it's a simple case of sliding it in there lifting the lid and I've got the bolt fixing down here and that's it job done nice and easy to shut just lift it up as soon as you start to turn it it almost acts like a spring so you can't fail to shut it the furnace is designed to direct melt there's a um, a sprue, call it a sprue, there's a pouring point there and it's just bunged off on the inside. So it's a bit grotty in there. So that's my smallest crucible and the plinth which broke up a long time ago that's the Mark II plinth actually, the Mark I, there's the Mark I which is just a, a solid block and that's reinforced with stainless steel and the reason this one broke up is because I forgot to put the stainless steel in it when I cast it but it's um, I'll turn it over, I'm, I'm sure I've covered this in the last video you can see that it's not entirely solid underneath, it's, it's hollow and it's just to let heat get in underneath but I've never had a problem with stability with them so I've just left it in there and it works fine a uh, little cast iron um, skillet I suppose the Americans call it a little pot or something that does two things when I first start the furnace up I, I allow oil to run into it from the nozzle because I push the nozzle right in and also I put the lighting fuel in there which is normally a, a diesel petrol mix so that's the underside I don't think I've ever looked under the underside of that ever since I built it now, I've said before the furnace did get knocked over years ago and got a crack but that crack has never got any worse so again I've never worried about it thickness wise it's, it's about it's about that thick which is what two inches refractory and the rest of it is a high temperature insulation so I've just put the heater in and I've turned on the power supply for it well I've connected it up because it's just a crocodile clip and I've got the temperature set to about 35 degrees I think on the heater block never had a need to turn it up any higher than that ever since I've done the conversion it works quite well so that gets the block nice and warm and as soon as I turn the tap on the oil will start to flow through it so hopefully all the fresh oil that goes through that block will warm up obviously as you saw when it's out I always have it just tipped up in that pan so any residual oil just runs out so when I turn the oil on, the fresh amount of oil that it starts to get, starts to get warm straight away. There's no cold oil in the pipe work. So to light it, make sure that it's pushed all the way in, so it, to the end of the, I'll show you. Right, so I push the nozzle through. Let me open it up. Right, using my phone for a torch. So I push the no nozzle right the way in and it enters and comes over that little cast iron skillet. So what I do is turn the oil on and let it run into that. So give it a few seconds and the oil starts to run out and starts to fill that up. So 
So what I do is I just tip a little bit of oil. He said, well, it's diesel, petrol mix, bit of oil, all sorts really, just any old crap. And I just tip a little bit into that stainless steel pan. Move that well out of the way. Stick, dip it in. She's away. Shut her up. And turn the fan on. Thank mm -hmm. you.